So with a new patch dropping this week and considering the buff to light roll and the nerf to the distance of bloodhound step for medium and heavy equip load, I thought it would be appropriate to make a build for light equipment load that could pump out some really impressive damage while still focusing on survivability and optimizing for these new bloodhound step and light roll changes. To do this, we are going to be power sensing two whips, which can actually be ridiculously good. These are some of the lightest weapons in the game, which is perfect for a light roll build because they can be power sensed while having enough excess equip load to use some armor and still stay below that 30% cap. And the other reason is that they also have a huge range and a very solid moveset with incredible jump attacks. And because of their range, you can really take advantage of the extra distance that the new light roll provides and also with a light equip load, you can maintain the full bloodhound step distance to stay very mobile and still be hitting your target even from mid range. The whips primarily use strike damage, which is also effective against anything heavily armored. And do not worry, even though we're not wearing much armor at all, you can still make this build quite tanky in PVE. The problem in PvP obviously is the lack of poise to withstand trades, but there is also an aspect of this build that can counter that to a certain degree as well. And we will get to that very nasty trick a little bit later in the video. With low poise, we are going to want high vigor so we don't get one shot if staggered. And we are going to need a relatively high endurance stat investment for the light equip load in order to light roll. This is actually very useful anyway because power sensing whips leans into quite an aggressive playstyle. So the more stamina we have to keep those combos coming, the better. And we can still achieve some massive damage without needing big offensive stat investments because we are focusing on sources of damage that scale based on a percentage of the target's maximum health, which are bleed procs, frostbite procs, and the scarlet rot dot. We'll be getting 55 innate bleed buildup from each of the whips, and we are using the dragon communion seal to cast rotten breath. And you can passively hold another dragon communion seal in the other hand, as it weighs nothing at all, to increase the potency of dragon breath incantations by another 15% if you want to. The left hand whip will be cold infused with up to 103 frost buildup to trigger frostbite, and the right hand whip will have the keen affinity for the dexterity scaling, and it'll be enchanted with blood flame blade. Now, the Blood Flame Blade enchant applies a debuff to the target when hit, which causes 20 bleed buildup per second for 2 seconds, which brings the total bleed buildup per attack to 150, which is great. Anything over 100 for a status effect buildup is very effective. Blood Flame Blade also infuses the weapon with fire damage. This flame damage is very important because a frostbite proc actually cannot occur repeatedly like bleed can. This is because frostbite applies a debuff which increases all damage taken toward that target by 20% and lowers its stamina regeneration for 30 seconds. While that debuff is active, frostbite cannot build up again on the target. It's actually a great debuff. However, we want juicy chunks of HP to be repeatedly deleted instead. Luckily, any flame damage caused to the target will remove the frostbite debuff, which enables frostbite to proc again and again and again in the same way as bleed. A bleed proc removes around 7 to 15% of a health bar, a frostbite proc removes around 5 to 10% of a health bar, and rot removes a lot. I don't know the exact amount, but it really hurts over a period of 90 seconds. These damage procs are happening in conjunction with the other damage that our weapons and incantations are inflicting. So when you stack all of these sources of damage together, you end up with some crazy bursts of damage, regardless of how much health the target has. All of this is augmented by a series of incantation buffs and effects from each armor piece, the talismans and the wondrous physic, 
which will all increase the base damage output of your weapons substantially, as well as providing a lot of damage mitigation to ensure that you can take quite a few hits. This is my first playthrough and I just did Melania on this build at level 100 to test it out. I started the game as the Samurai class because I was originally wanting to power stance Uchi Katanas, but the most optimal class for this build would actually be the Prophet or Bandit. And the main stat distributions should look like this at level 100, 44 Vigor, 21 Mind. This allows for the full set of buffs to be cast with one bar of FP before needing a flask. 35 Endurance for the Stamina and Light Equip Load. No extra points into Strength. 20 into Dexterity to wield the Whips. No extra points into Intelligence. 25 Faith to be able to cast all of the necessary buffs. And 16 Arcane so that you can use Swarm of Flies or Exiles Decay if you want to. For the level 125 meta range, We'll be going up to 54 Vigor and 35 Dexterity. And for the level 150 meta, we'll have 59 Vigor and 55 Dexterity. At level 150, this build can actually be incredibly versatile in terms of using long-ranged incantations to supplement the Frostbite and Bleed procs of the whips from a distance. So there is a strong alternative option to the stat distribution if you intend to use those skills often. Just reallocate the points from Dexterity and split them between Faith and Arcane so that they are an equal 30-30 and you can achieve an impressive incantation scaling with the Dragon Communion Seal that would rival a build with 60 Faith. As well as having fast casting speed due to the relatively high Dexterity. It will also scale up the bleed or rot buildup of Swarm of Flies and Rotten Breath with the Arcane stat. As for the equipment, we're using two Hoslo's Pedal Whips, which have the best base damage and the highest innate bleed buildup of all whips at 55. You can get two of these in your first playthrough. They also look very pretty. You'll have a Keen Affinity Whip in your right hand for dexterity scaling and the Blood Flame Blade Enchantment and a Cold Affinity Whip in your left hand to proc Frostbite. The Dragon Communion Seal will be in your left hand to cast Rotten Breath and enchant your right hand weapon. And as I mentioned, a second Dragon Communion Seal can be used in the other hand because it has zero weight and it will stack another 15% boost to the Dragon Communion incantations. This works for any seal, by the way. So for instance, you could use Two Frenzied Flame Seals here for a combined 40% boost to Frenzied Flame Incantations if you wanted to use Frenzied Burst. As for the Talismans, we have Lord of Blood's Exaltation. With this, if a bleed proc occurs anywhere in your vicinity, including on you, it will boost all damage by 20% for 20 seconds. This will also boost the damage of your incantations. We have Claw Talisman. This will boost the damage of your jump attacks by 15%. Jump attacks are really the staple of this build because they are so, so strong, and the dual whips have an amazing one. Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. This will add a damage modifier to successive attacks, and because we're using two weapons, this can build up quite quickly. The modifiers are 6% after your first two attacks, then 8% after your 4th, and 13% more damage after your 6th. These attacks need to occur within 1.5 seconds of each other to keep the modifier increasing, which is very doable as whips have quite a fast moveset. Finally, we have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which reduces physical damage taken by 20%. This is a huge boost to defense, as the majority of enemies in the game cause some degree of physical damage. However, in PvP, this talisman only reduces physical damage taken by 5%, which is not really worth a talisman slot in my opinion. So here are some alternatives, and they are all really great options for both PvP and PvE. Millicent's Prosthesis is amazing to pair with Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. It adds plus five to dexterity, 
and also has a successive attack modifier. Just a little bit weaker at plus 4% damage, then 6%, then 11%. Old Lord's Talisman, if you want your buffs to last a little bit longer, it adds 30% to any buff's duration, which is quite a significant amount and useful for long fights or PvP interactions. And finally, the Green Turtle Talisman is a really great one if you're struggling to manage your stamina. It boosts stamina regeneration by 17.7%. So onto the armor. You'll only be using three pieces of armor in order to remain under the 30% equipment load cap for light rolling. On the head, we'll be wearing the white mask. This headpiece has a buff very similar to Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which increases all damage done by 10% for 20 seconds once a bleed proc occurs in your vicinity. And this 10% stacks multiplicatively with the 20% from the talisman's buff. On the chest, we're wearing the raptor's black feathers. This armor piece increases your jump attack damage by 10% and stacks with the 15% from the claw talisman for a total of 25% increased jump attack damage. Landing jump attacks with your whips should be your main objective with this build. A jump attack that also triggers a bleed and a frostbite proc can cause devastating damage and stagger. Um, the pants, they are not necessary, um, but I just couldn't bring myself to make a build without pants. And they do waste 2.5 equip load, which is very annoying actually, especially when it comes to equipping two seals, for instance, but I just couldn't do it. I needed pants. And these pants are the page trousers, which matched the raptor's black feathers armor nicely, so that's why I chose those. But wear what you want for the pants, or don't, you know? You can put those points somewhere else. The wondrous physic for this build is using the thorny cracked tier. This provides a huge modifier to successive attacks in the same way that the rotten winged sword insignia does, except at plus 9%, then to plus 13%, and then plus 20% extra damage. Really incredible damage potential on combos, and it lasts for three minutes. Secondly, the opaline hard tier which boosts all damage negation by 15% and is also lasting for three minutes. Using this in conjunction with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman and the Golden Vow buff makes you surprisingly tanky in PvE. You can really take quite a few hits before dying. However, in PvP, this only provides 10% damage reduction, which is actually not that bad at all. Um, but if you'd prefer to use something else, then I would recommend either the Green Burst Crystal Tier for an extra 33.3% stamina regeneration, also for 3 minutes. Um, stamina can be tricky to manage, so this is very nice. And the Crimson Bubble Tier can help to recover from those near-death trades. If you fall below 20%, health, it restores 30% of your health immediately. The Ash of War is obviously Bloodhound Step. Whips really lack any other good options for Ashes of War. And with the light equip load, you won't really be feeling the effects of the recent nerf too much anyway. It is still an incredibly useful defensive skill, and when used alongside the new light roll, it can really keep you very mobile and very difficult to catch, especially when using whips from a mid-range. Um, also, just as a side note, that if you are evading to create distance between you and your target, you can alternate between light rolling and the Bloodhound Step iframes, and that way you can avoid having to deal with any of the diminishing returns of just spamming Bloodhound Step because the light roll breaks up the repetition which would cause it to be diminished on subsequent casts. Now for the buffs, you want to cast your buffs in order of their duration so that you aren't wasting any uptime on your shorter duration offensive buffs. 
If you're using a spirit summon, you can summon it first and then buff up while it takes the aggro of the boss. Um, firstly, you're going to use Blessing's Boon. This provides a very decent HP regen for yourself and any allies in the area. It is 8 HP per second and it really adds up over time as the buff lasts for 90 seconds. Secondly, you'll cast Golden Vow. This is just the best buff in the game. It increases all damage by 15% or 7.5% in PvP and decreases all damage taken by 10% or 5% in PvP for you and all allies uh, and it lasts for 80 seconds. By the way, Golden Vow and Blessing's Boon also affect spirit summons, so this can become really potent with a tanky summon. Third, you'll cast Blood Flame Blade, which enchants your right hand weapon with fire damage and also the status effect debuff, which builds bleed. And the enchant lasts for 60 seconds. Fourth is Flame Grant Me Strength which is an extremely powerful body buff, which increases all your physical damage by 20% and all fire damage by 20% and increases stamina recovery by 11%. Insanely good. And many of your ranged offensive incantations also deal physical or flame damage. This buff lasts for 30 seconds. Now, if you're really struggling with the low poise from the light equipment load, there is an alternative option for the body buff slot, which is Fire's Deadly Sin. This buff causes a small amount of flame damage to yourself and enemies very close to you, and it lasts for 40 seconds. It behaves as a close proximity extension of a fire-based weapon enchant. So it will apply the Blood Flame Blade bleed debuff to enemies within dagger range of your body. This can be very oppressive in PvP as it will make it difficult for other players to stay in close range of you. And because of this, many PvP players do not like it at all and have declared that it is cheating. So if you want to use this, it may be best to keep it just for PvE purposes. And when I was testing it, Flame Grant Me Strength was providing a comparable damage output anyway, especially with higher stat values while simultaneously improving ranged incantations. So your choice depending on your playstyle. So then for ranged incantations, I mean, your whips are definitely going to be your main source of damage, but having decent faith and dexterity means you can be very versatile and quick casting with this build, especially at higher levels. There are some great faith incantations to use too, so Rotten Breath is obviously your main offensive spell for the HP damage dot. It is the cheaper version of this incantation, so you can get a full double cast off easily. You can also use the upgraded Ectsykes Decay if you want, but the FP consumption to damage ratio is a bit better with Rotten Breath. Applying this dot at the start of every encounter is optimal. You can also use Dragon Ice or Borealis Mist if you want some great ranged frostbite. Swarm of Flies as a ranged spammable in both PvE and PvP is really good for some extra bleed buildup. It's amazing to cast a few of these and then run in to start whipping as the bleed procs can come rapidly if the weapons are hitting at the same time. It has a great target tracking uh, and it also removes frostbite for some reason. I think this is great, um, but if you don't want to use it, then take those few stat points out of Arcane and put them somewhere else. Black Flame is a good ranged spammable for PvE on this build for two reasons. It will inflict fire damage to reset the frostbite procs in the same way as Blood Flame Blade or Fire's Deadly Sin and it also applies a dot which deals 2 to 5% of the maximum HP over 2 seconds, so you can cause significant damage without needing a big faith investment at all. Pest Threads is also another great incantation for really big enemies because it can go through multiple hitboxes. 
Uh, it has great tracking in PvP, so it's very annoying. It's also cheap and spammable. Bestial Sling is great in PvP also. It's a very quick casting spell, especially with high dexterity, so it can trigger the successive attacks buffs from your Wondrous Physic, Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, and Millicent's Prosthesis. It will cause flinch and can stagger, which is great to provide an opening for jump attacks. Honed Bolt is a very fast and cheap chain cast spell and can also be used to trigger the successive attacks buffs and can be comboed with lightning strike and that shit looks great. <laughs> Finally, you have Frenzied Burst if you want, a very long ranged option. It has significant madness buildup in PvP, so it can be a great way to snipe people from a distance during invasions. Just as a side note, you can put Hoarfrost Stomp as the Ash of War on your offhand whip if you want to cause frostbite in a cone in front of you. This can be a great way to deal with trash mobs or in group PvP situations as well. At level 150, if you want to take some points out of dexterity and split them between Faith and Arcane equally so that they are 30-30, you can achieve an impressive incantation scaling with the Dragon Communion Seal, actually. The same type of scaling you would get if you shoved like 60 points into Faith. Um, and then your options really, really open up and the damage is great as well. So you can use any of those like boss deleting incantations at your leisure, like Giant's Flame Take The, which can also pair incredibly well with the 20% extra fire damage buff from Flame Grant Me Strength, or Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, which hits bosses multiple times in one cast for ridiculous amounts of damage. And there are plenty of other options to mess around with for late game fun time as well. As for the Spirit Ash option in PvE, I am using the Dung Eater Puppet because he is a very tanky boy, especially with Blessing Spoon and Golden Vow active, and he also has bleed buildup on his weapon, which complements your own bleed buildup very nicely. He's easily one of the best spirit summons in my opinion. Very strong. And a couple of quick tips for the keyboard and mouse controls for power stancing if you are using PC. Honestly, the PC controls for this game can feel a little bit clunky to coordinate, so I simplified things with two weapons equipped. The guard keybind will activate your special power stancing moveset, which is the main way you'll be doing damage. So this is bound to the left mouse click You'll cast incantations with the seal in your left hand in order to put your weapon enchant on your right hand weapon. Conveniently, casting with this seal will also be activated by the guard keybind, so it will also just be a left mouse click. The skill activation keybind for using the Ash of War I have set to my right click so that it is very easy to combo Bloodhound Step with the Power Stance moveset by using left and right clicks. To change items and spells, I'm using the two extra side buttons on my mouse. To change weapons, I'm using those same buttons, but while holding down shift at the same time. This is much better than trying to move your hand to the directional keys. Anything else is total preference. Personally, I'm using spacebar to jump and Q to dodge roll because I am using jump attacks a lot and spacebar just feels more natural to me for that. If you liked this build or found this video helpful in some way, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and turn the notifications on. I intend to start making content consistently for several games and it would really help me get this channel started if you could do that. Would love to hear your feedback in the comments section, any ideas for other builds or videos you'd like me to do, and let me know what you think of the new patch 1.06 to Elden Ring.